All right, guys, uh, welcome back. Um, we have the 90s Forerunner dual diaphragm brake booster installed. All right, so when you're doing this, uh, obviously you have to take the 12 millimeter nuts off to get the master cylinder off. You'll use a 10 millimeter line wrench to get your uh, brake lines off here and here. I just use a piece of uh, glove with the um, zip tie to keep any contamination from getting in the line during this process. Uh, you don't want no dust, dirt in there, any other critters. So you live in those areas of states that uh, you get the mud daubers, they'll get up in there and make a clog. Until we're ready to put the vacuum on, we'll just go ahead and leave the cap on. Um, I can go ahead and put that on already, but next thing we gotta do is put our brake booster. We're uh, currently short parts on that and uh, it'll come in soon enough and once we get that on and we'll install that and uh, depending on what's needed uh, we may have to adjust the connector on the cap or we might be, be able to get away with using the old cap onto the new reservoir so we'll see what happens with that other than that's just a splice of the wires uh, we put the mass, new master on, we'll put this bracket on up here and uh, we'll be ready to uh, <clears throat> bleed the system. But as you can see, I already got the wheels off down here. We got the calipers removed, you know, but we got just a little bit of movement in here. So I want to check these wheel bearings out, check it for grease. And the next modification we're going to do, we're going to go to the Forerunner uh, calipers, and we'll bolt them in, in place here. So depending on the wheel size, I don't know, since these are 14 inch wheel rims, stock wheels, steel wheels, um, I don't know if we're gonna run any clearance issues with the Forerunner calipers. So we'll find that out when we get to that point. Um, the one reason that I want to buy those local is because if they don't fit, I can just return them without a hassle. You go in and buy things off of Rock Auto, stuff like that, then you gotta take time off work, you know, whatever, get to the post office, pay your own pocket to mail it back for the return. So some things are good for Rock Auto for getting cheap parts, but then it, go, it goes back to your time. Do you got time to wait? Do you have, um, you know make sure you're getting the right part because i've had issues where i've got the wrong part and that's just what it is and you got to pay out of pocket to send it back um so just keep those things mindful when you're doing that type of stuff um other than that like i said everything will be pretty smooth uh, uh yes we could, I could go through here and change out the 30 year old rubber hose here since those are original um but We'll get to that point when we put the, the different calipers on and we'll bleed the rest of the system. Um, now, when we go back to the back wheel, all right, we go back to the back wheel, we'll put the um, FJ80 uh, wheel cylinders in the back, all right? You really can't see it for right here. Um, we'll just pan the camera around. So we're gonna pan the camera around here. We're gonna look back here at the wheel for the wheel cylinder which is located up here and we're going to replace those with the FJ80 uh, wheel cylinders with that being said um, um, we'll go use the FJ80 wheel cylinders on that and they'll give us a bigger uh, uh, you know caliper you know for wheel cylinder for more of a hydraulic pressure for the braking so we get better brakings the, the you know the real thing what we'd want to do is actually put uh, go to like a disc brake back here, you know. But I don't know if it's even really worth the headache of that. We'll see how the brakes do with the um, the new master. So when you're installing the new booster, you're gonna come up underneath, all right. And with that being said. All right, right up here, you have you have a, a spring and a cotter pin. You're gonna pull that cotter pin, you're gonna remove the spring. Don't get the spring to come off the hook from up underneath the dash. It'll be kind of a challenge to get it back on. 
to reach up underneath there. But you got four bolts, or I mean, excuse me, four nuts on four studs. And uh, you're just gonna remove those with the 12 millimeter uh, quarter inch ratchet. Um, that's all I use, quarter inch, quarter inch ratchet, 12 millimeter, six point socket. So uh, it that's all you really need. It shouldn't be on there that tight. Um, and that's really it, you know, um, when you put it back in, make sure, um, so if you have the, the, the single diaphragm, the stock for the, the pickup, this is a single, and now we got the, the dual diaphragm installed, you have a spacer, all right? You're going to have to take this spacer off, it's a aluminum spacer, to, to get that to fit in there, because your studs... Um, the, here they're about, let's take a look. They're roughly about two, two and two and five sixteenths long. Well, these are not, really not that much longer for the brick rooster. So you'll find out once you put this aluminum spacer on this one, it ain't gonna work out for you. So <clears throat> other than finding out the hard way, just uh, go ahead and remove the spacer, keep with your old booster. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this, send it back as a core charge, just keep it, because if you get rid of the rig or anything like that, um, you know, some people like those original parts, so that's just what it is. But uh, I went ahead and used the old uh, hardware, you know, washers. I'm not using, carrying over the, the I'm gonna stay with these old original Toyota nuts and keep it as you know as factory as as, as possible so it looks original um and that's just my pet peeve about that i don't really care for some of the new hardware so we'll probably put a little bit of like um loctite on it on the nuts to keep it so it doesn't back off anything like that and uh, we'll put a little bit of some sort of like grease or lubrication down here for this uh seal so it doesn't dry out and cause any premature uh, wear out or anything like that. So, so we'll do some of that with that uh, install. And uh, when we get the master cylinder in, uh, we're going to be installing the one inch bore. So that'll give us the more hydraulic brake pressure and it'll give us a lot better brake braking. So I'm waiting to, uh, to find out what it's going to be like when we get this all set up and we should have adequate brake pressure so i know some of you guys here on youtube have done this um i'm not going through all the hassle of showing you how to, to to turn a wrench um if you need any questions with that hey just leave a comment subscribe and let me know what's going on with your project so we can uh, swap ideas and experiences uh for uh, some of your brake upgrades for the your toyota pickups or uh for your forerunners as well. You know, some of these uh, brake uh, upgrades go up into the early uh, Tacomas as well, uh, like the T100 in the, the pickup, pretty much same with a lot of the same characteristics, but some things are different. Um, but with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video. Uh, you got any questions, comments, concerns, like I said, uh, comment below. Thank you.